and we have answered the call. For years, you've been saying, Betsy, you're talking about all these great design concepts, but we can't visualize them. You're describing the picture that the listener sent in of their problem, and we wish we could see that picture too. After all, a picture is worth a thousand words, and I do my best to describe them, but there's nothing like seeing it for yourself. And that's why Affordable Interior Design, the podcast, now has a YouTube channel. Not only do we have a YouTube channel where you could see recordings and clips of these podcast episodes, we also have an Instagram, a Facebook, and so many other exciting things. You should check it out. Head over to affordableinteriordesign.com slash links. Once again, affordableinteriordesign.com slash L-I-N-K-S links. And when you go there, you will see links to our YouTube page, our Instagram page, our Facebook page, and more. Please check it out, follow and subscribe so you can see everything I'm talking about. Hello, friends. This, again, is not Betsy. It's Catherine, the producer who puts all this content up in the air so you can bring it back down onto your phones or whatever device you use. Betsy is taking just a little bit more time off what with the new baby and the holidays. So we are presenting a best of episode. If you have questions, though, for when Betsy does start recording new episodes, which will be soon, just go on to affordableinteriordesign.com, click on the media resources tab, and then hit podcast. And if you're a premium member or a regular member, just click on either and put in your question. She would love to have as many questions as possible because she misses you. And I hope you enjoy this best of. Are you a fan of this podcast? Do you wish there was even more juicy content for you to sink your ears into? Well, there is. You can become a premium member of this podcast for $5.99 a month and get full access to an archive of over 50 bonus episodes. Additionally, we release a bonus episode every single month. That's a ton of extra content, including my personal interior design diaries, extra tips, my talking about trends, and so much more. Additionally, you'll be keeping us on the airwaves each and every week because your premium membership money goes directly back to making this podcast amazing. Check us out at affordableinteriordesign.com. Click on podcast to learn more and to become a premium member today. a high-end designer or a lot of money to get a luxe look be your own interior designer this is affordable interior design the podcast here's your host betsy Hellman. guys if you are not premium members of this podcast yet you better head over to affordableinteriordesign.com and click on the podcast link I just recorded a bonus episode sharing my interior design diary, talking about clients I'm currently working with, giving you insight into their challenges, giving you my thoughts behind the scenes. And I actually just recorded a story that I'm not brave enough to put on my big podcast. So I'm going to record that for September's bonus ep. Heck, you know what? I'm going to record it right after this as a little bonus bonus, and I'm going to send it out right now. I'm blushing because um, I, I should know better as an interior designer. This is a little something that sparked jealousy in me, intense jealousy, and I want to share this story with you, but I can't share it so publicly. So go to affordableinteriordesign.com, click 
the podcast tab. For $5.99 a month, you can become a bonus member, which gives you access to our bonus archive. Additionally, you can get a fresh episode every month, a sneak peek behind the scenes, stories I can't quite tell on this bigger platform because they make me blush. And, uh, You'll be supporting our podcast. You'll be keeping us on the airwaves, which is so vital because we don't even break even with this cute little podcast. Right now, it's a labor of love, and I do love it. But your premium membership dollars go directly to producing more episodes. And we're getting close to breaking even. I'm very optimistic. But we're not there yet. And I want to keep this on the airwaves for years to come. For you, for future listeners, let me know that you appreciate this podcast by becoming a premium member today. AffordableInteriorDesign.com. Look for the podcast tab. All right, let me dive into your questions. I'm still hot and flushed from that story that I did record and deleted because I was like, oh no, Betsy. Oh no, you can't tell that on the main airwaves. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna calm down, cool down, and dive into Amber's question. <laughs> Amber writes, Hi Betsy, I've loved learning about your podcast. I've been listening to the archives and I recently received your book, Affordable Interior Design. My husband and I are closing on our first house and I have questions. The first order of business after moving in is painting all of that trim white. I haven't gotten samples yet, but I'm thinking about using Decorators White or Simply White from Benjamin Moore. Next, we'll be picking wall colors. I'm hoping to go with a grayish. Given the warm honey oak floors, they are in great condition, but would not be my choice. Do you think a cool or warm tone would help de-emphasize the floors? Any favorite Benjamin Moore color you would pick? All right, before I read your second question, Amber, I'm going to answer this first one. Uh, yes, your floors are very orange, very warm, very honey. You have a lot of wood trim as well, and the wood surrounded the fireplace. Right now, it's just orange overload. I'm really excited to read that you're going to be painting this trim. If you go decorator's white, that has an undertone of blue. If you go simply white, that has warm undertones to it. And I would not completely go cool because it will be such a sharp contrast to your floors that it may feel a little jarring or incongruous. When you're looking at grayages, I would be inclined to choose ones that do have a little bit more warmth. I would look at white sand. I would look at abalone. These are two colors that immediately come to mind that are both from Benjamin Moore that will really embrace the warmth while still cooling this space down. You could look at Edgecomb Gray if you're looking to go a little bit more saturated. And with those, I would be inclined to use the Simply White trim color. Of course, you'll do that in a semi-gloss finish, whereas your walls will be either in a flat or matte or in an eggshell. Let's get to your next question. You have a question about the living room setup. Betsy, I'm very thrown off by the closet that's adjacent to the fireplace. It's going to serve a nice purpose as a coat closet, but I feel like it limits the setup of our furniture and it is awkward. I would like to put some type of furniture piece on the opposite side of the fireplace, but I'm afraid it's going to look imbalanced. Ideally, I would love to lose the closet altogether and put some kind of built-ins on both sides of the fireplace, but I'm just not sure that's in the budget. What are your thoughts? Thank you, Amber from Pittsburgh. Amber, yes, this room, if you're looking at the wall that has the fireplace, is very symmetrical. The fireplace is smack dab in the middle. On the left-hand side, you have an indentation. Uh, the fireplace protrudes. And on the right-hand side, there is no indentation because they've built a closet, which makes it almost flush with the face of the fireplace. That side looks very symmetrical, and I can understand why you're a little bit disappointed that you can't play up that symmetry with built-ins. However, the other side of the room, opposite the fireplace, is completely asymmetrical. There's a staircase going up, so it's not a full wall. Additionally, it looks like that's your main point of entry right there. So right below at the foot of the staircase, there's your main entry door. And that means that these are walkways. This is a major thoroughfare on this side. I'm not really upset that there's a closet there because having that symmetry 
the room is not symmetrical. I can't center the sofa on the fireplace because it's going to gum up the works with those walkways. I'm going to need to shift everything down to the left anyway, whether or not the room was symmetrically based on the fireplace. But because there's no back wall, because that staircase only has a partial angle of sheetrock, you're dealing with an asymmetrical room anyway. So the closet is giving me no agita and I'm really glad that it's going to serve a practical purpose for you. You're going to need to shift the furniture down in this room. The sofa is not going to be centered on the fireplace. You're going to have to make use of that indentation for potentially extra seating as well as storage. You will have a decision to make about where the TV goes. You might find that you can put it above the fireplace, but you might be more inclined to put it inside that indentation. This room is going to pose some challenges because it doesn't have a full wall opposite that fireplace. And I'm interested to hear what you do with it. So Amber, keep me posted, but definitely don't mourn that closet situation because I think it's going to give you a lot more practical usage than if you didn't have it. There wouldn't really be a lot to do over there anyway. Okay, let's get to Audrey's question. Audrey is from Nova Scotia and she writes, Betsy, I'm really interested in interior design and I'm trying to learn as much as I can from a variety of resources. I recently discovered your podcast and I went back and I listened to all the episodes. I'm fascinated by your practical and down-to-earth approach of using more affordable sources for decor items and real-life design. Having spent the past few decades in a completely unrelated healthcare field, I find myself grabbing towards interiors as a potential future career. The idea of helping people by listening to their wants and needs and putting a plan into action in a creative way is so appealing to me. I understand that you do much of your work at a distance. Do you have employees, assistants, interns who work from a distance? I have no formal training, but I'm currently working on the Interior Design Institute online diploma program. Do you have affiliated employees in Canada yet? If not, how would you advise me to get started if I venture on my own? Audrey. Audrey, I have thoughts, feelings, and opinions. First of all, yes, we do have virtual packages. Those are not as popular as our in-person packages. And I do have seven designers, two of whom I have never met. I'm meeting them next week. My Washington, D.C.-based firm, I didn't go down there and train them. I trained them virtually on the computer. Um, I'm really excited to meet them. They're rocking and rolling. That being said, expanding to new markets has been somewhat tougher than I imagined. I thought that we'd hang our shingle in Washington, D.C. and we'd be instantly busy. And it's been much harder to spread the word. It's been much harder to become organically relevant on SEO and on websites. And when you Google, it's been challenging to expand. So the bulk of our business is still based in the New York City area, even though we do a lot of virtual design. I just designed in... Canada last week and the week before I was designing in Florida. Never a dull moment. So we do have employees who work at a distance, but right now we've just had a real trouble scaling to new markets. It's been so much easier to grow where we are. And New York is such a large market that really the world's our oyster out here. That being said, the way I've chosen to expand my business now that I know that opening in new towns is really, really hard and expensive is that I'm going to do my Affordable Interior Design Academy because even my designers who have other degrees and five of my designers do have an interior design degree and three of them do not, including myself in that three, uh, everybody, whether they have a diploma or not, needs to go to Affordable Interior Design Academy because when you get out of school, they do not teach you tips for practical decorating in residential spaces. They don't teach you about correct proportion. They don't teach you about how to shop at Crate and Barrel, how to shop at Room and Board. They give you these speculative pro speculative projects that don't have budgets. They don't teach you how to deal with a client, that client interaction, which is really key to getting referrals and getting more business. They're all hypothetical scenarios that they teach you in school that involve custom everything. So they're not telling you these are the six sizes of rugs you're going to find at every retail store. This is how you know which size goes in which room. This is how you create optimum flow for this room based on XYZ. These are things they just don't cover because 
There's a lot to know if you want to become a high-end or custom interior designer. There's a lot to know if you want to flip a house and gut it down to the studs. But if you want to be somebody who helps your neighbor, who helps them to pick out new furniture, pick out wall paint, change the layout of their home, which is what most people need these days. Well, that's just not something you're going to learn at interior design school. And my designers who've been to school versus my designers who don't have a design degree, they equally have the same number of mistakes when they do my initial sample projects. I have everyone do an initial sample project so I can see that, yes, they're going to be of our echelon. And it's amazing to me. It's mind-blowing to me that these practical tips regarding proportion, price, etc. are not taught in school these days. So that's why an interior design degree for me is not the end of the road. It's only the beginning. And it doesn't even have to be your beginning. As you know, I didn't go to interior design school. I didn't get a degree like that. And, you know, we don't even use those technical softwares. You don't need AutoCAD. You don't need Revit. You don't need to spend years or tens of thousands of dollars on a floor planner software. That is not needed at all. Uh, And I just have a different framework. So while I don't have affiliated employees in Canada yet, uh, in terms of getting started on your own, you do want to get some kind of education. And I'm really glad that you're already working on that. The second thing that you want to do is you want to start designing. Because as you've heard me say, what you learn in school is not going to be applicable to what you do for your neighbors, your friends, yourself. And you need to build a presence. You need to get a website. And on that website, you need to put pictures. And you might start first with pictures of your own home because you probably feel pretty proud of your rooms. Or if you don't, you could easily make some changes that would make you feel proud. And that's a space you have total access to. That's a budget that you control. That would be my first piece of advice. Getting a website, putting your own home up on it, showing your friends what you've done, asking if they want help with their space spaces for a significantly reduced fee if you can get pictures and testimonials because if you don't have money to saturate the market with ads you will need pictures and testimonials to start that referral chain to get that credibility that would be my recommendation for you Audrey and I'll have lots more tips and tricks you know as we talk through these podcast episodes but um, I think that'll be a great foundation for you And that'll get the wheels started in motion. And from there, you'll see what organically takes place. What are people asking you for? Based on the pictures, do they want to see rooms with more color? Are they asking to see different types of rooms? And then that will lead you to building that online portfolio. Don't worry about a hardcover portfolio. Nobody needs that anymore. You will never need to print these pictures. You will never need to put them in a book. Just have that nice basic website up and be flexible with your pricing while you're getting started because you're going to want them to scratch your back in terms of reviews and then you'll scratch their back by offering them a reduced price. And now it's time for a quick commercial break. Have you ever dreamed of becoming an interior designer? You don't want to go back to university, you don't want to work for a large firm, but you just don't know how to get started. You want flexibility, you want to pursue your passion, and you want to make income. Well, you should definitely check out the Uploft Interior Design Academy. It's my proprietary program that I've used internally for years and have made available to the public. Not only do you get video modules that you can take at your own pace, but you also get one-on-one coaching sessions with me, group coaching sessions with our Facebook group of Academy students, and so much more. If you're interested, Get more information and sign up for an exploratory call with me at affordableinteriordesign.com slash academy. Once again, that's affordableinteriordesign.com slash academy. It's time to start living the life of your dreams. All right. 
right. My next question and final question for today comes from Danielle. Danielle writes, Betsy, I recently discovered your podcast and I love it. Your personality is so bubbly and your design tips are helpful. They always brighten my day. Here's my question. After years of living with roommates, I am moving into a one-bedroom apartment alone. I'd like to invest in the interior design and make it feel like mine. I'm having trouble defining my style and understanding how to bring different pieces together so that they feel cohesive. I'm struggling with my living room. Following your advice, I have an inspiration piece, which is my rug. And I've decided I'm going to buy a blue couch. Uh, I just opened the link to see this beautiful rug. I plan to position the ottoman so that it juts out from the couch so it will be like a sectional. I've purchased a coffee table, a bar table, and the bar will be in the living room and used as a dining table, extra kitchen counter space, etc. You've got to love New York City living. I really love the bohemian look of a blue couch with cognac leather accents. I've attached a few inspiration photos. The problem is leather is so expensive. I've considered leather chairs, too expensive, leather poofs, which seem obsolete, and that is because I'm already purchasing an ottoman that matches the couch. Do you have any tips on where I can sprinkle in leather accents to achieve my desired look? Also, where to find leather or faux leather goods that look luxe but won't break the bank? Sure, I do. First of all, that's a lovely rug. I'm glad that it's not too expensive and it has lots of colors you can pull from. My only concern is that if you're getting a blue sofa, this rug prominently features blue. If we had to, you know, deduce this rug 60-30-10, well... 60 of it would be the blue. And if it's not the exact blue of your couch, it's really going to clash. I would rather you get a rug that features that dark blue less prominently so that the sofa can be that blue wonder in the room, not competing with something else that's trying to be the same shade. As for leather, you can make a big punch. You can really give the space a feel of leather with some leather pillows. Pillows are going to be right next to you when you're sitting down. Pillows are like jewelry for your sofa. Even though they're not big, they will have a large visual presence. You'll be constantly putting your arm on them and they don't have to be that expensive. Just Google leather pillow. You'll find lots of places have them from CB2 to Williams-Sonoma and they don't have to be over $70. $70 may feel like a lot for a pillow, but it's not a lot for a leather item. Additionally, you might want to think about leather bookends or a leather tray on your coffee table. Again, it's something that's in the center of the space. It's something that your guests will be seeing all the time, whether it's holding the remote or coasters, but it's not going to be expensive because it's not big like a leather sofa or a leather armchair. These will be fantastic ways to incorporate a little bit of that texture without breaking the bank. Guys, do you have questions for me? Do you want to know something? I'm here for you. I'm here. Please take advantage of your opportunity and write to me because I love your questions. They fuel me each and every week. You can send them to Betsy at AffordableInteriorDesign.com. Once again, that's Betsy at AffordableInteriorDesign.com. And it's been great talking to you. I'm going to head out to some clients in New York City right now, headed to Chelsea, then Midtown, Never a dull moment, never a boring day. Gotta love interior design in the city. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Do you love learning about interior design? Do you wish you could know even more about feng shui, styling your home, where to buy the perfect furniture pieces, and more? Well, you can. We offer online classes. Head over to affordableinteriordesign.com, click on the shop tab, and you'll see our three 45-minute online classes. Purchase them one by one for $40 a piece or get the value pack of all three classes for $90 and we'll throw in the paperback version of our book for free. Heck, I'll even autograph it for you. Be sure to use promo code PODCAST at checkout to get 15% off your order.
A big thank you to our amazing producer, Catherine Heller, to Aton and the MBCR House Band, and to Affordable Interior Design, the sponsor of this podcast and the premier place to get an amazing look on a budget. Check out affordableinteriordesign.com. If you guys love the show, the very best way to support us is by spreading the word. Tell your friends or write us an awesome review on iTunes. So until next week, guys, thanks so much for joining us, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.